Hey, what's up, everyone? So today I'm I'm going to be sharing with you uh, one of the top Otello channels, uh, YouTube channel for the matter. Uh, besides, uh, of course, my channel. Uh, I'm still relatively new in actually teaching Otello compared to Mr. Tetsuya Nakajima of Japan. So he has probably 20 to 30 years of uh, experience in Otello and he's the top 10 world Otello ranked player. And of course, he's also a personal friend. I've met him quite a few times uh, face to face to actually play some games. And uh, yeah, he's a very friendly person and he's definitely some someone who is uh, more than willing to share the secrets of Otello as much as possible. Um, however, this channel, uh, it's purely in Japanese, so I wouldn't really be translating this, but I just wanted to share some of his uh, resources with all of you. And yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, I can kind of just partial interpret some of the things in this channel. So yeah, you can see that his channel is probably one of the biggest Otello channel possible with 8,000 over 8,000 subscribers and yeah, basically this means uh, Oset, this reads Osero, which is Japanese katakana for Othello and uh, basically this is kind of, uh, this character over here means to win and uh, these are basically the methods of winning. So essentially his channel is teaching people how to win in Othello, yeah. Basically, that's what he's trying to achieve. And of course, in his channel, he has a lot of interesting videos. This featured video that he has is basically uh, Othello SQ. SQ means uh, the S level rank. And of course, over here, these words means Takanashi 9 Dan versus Nakajima 8 Dan part 1 out of 3. So uh, they basically organize a very high level tournament, almost like a Master's League equivalent. Uh, which they called it, uh, interestingly, a Buta Ramen Cup. Yeah, basically to celebrate Buta Ramen. For those of you who are not familiar with Buta Ramen, it basically means pork ramen. So I think what they do is they play the tournament and they have lunch together. It's basically a very enjoyable afternoon when they uh, come together and study Otello and also, you know, go out and eat ramen with friends. And I think I met one of the Otello 3 Dan Japanese player. He's actually an owner of a ramen stall in uh, Japan. So that's a very interesting one. So if you continue to scroll down, you can see that this is uh, basically uh, his cartoonic uh, avatar uh, icon of himself. And of course, uh, he has many different lessons, uh, very good ones. So of course, you can go in and look at watch his videos is very interesting uh, because I think Othello is something that you know even if you are not able to understand Japanese you might be able to understand what exactly he's trying to teach so that's pretty interesting you can go ahead and check it out and of course things like wipeout opening uh, Mr. Nakajima actually wrote and published an Othello book as well so I think if you go to some of the bookstores like Kinokuniya uh, you might be able to find it and of course some real-time play videos and this one is very interesting so this is uh, Mr. Akihiro Takahashi 5 Dan playing against Mr. Keisuke Fukuchi 5 Dan when they were primary school or elementary school uh, elementary school level Meijin Sen uh, which is one of the ma three major tournaments in Japan and essentially uh, yeah that was uh, under 12 category and back then both of them were the top players and interestingly Keisuke is the 2018 world Othello champion and of course Mr. Takahashi was the 2019 world Othello champion so yeah very interesting uh, duo and definitely uh, players to look out for in the future. So if we continue to scroll down you can see a couple of videos he does have a sub channel created called uh, Nakajima's Othello channel so he does uh, cover more uh, casual topics related to Othello maybe some interesting uh, abstract topics as well. So yeah, if we toggle to the channel, this is basically his sub-channel. And over here you can see some other topics that he covers, uh, which is, yeah, very, very interesting topics. Uh, some of, like, this is opening, you know, this is the weak, uh, weakest Othello AI. 4x4 four four Othello, you know, what exactly is the solution to it? Uh, maybe some uh, other players playing Othello as well. So JavaScript. Uh, making maybe an Otello software using JavaScript. So yeah, basically, basically very interesting. So yeah, 
in this video, I'm going to include uh, to this uh, his Otello cha channel link, or otherwise you can also just search for Otello Japan. So let's uh, also jump over to the Otello Japan website to have a look and yeah basically this that is going to form the prelude leading up to the further Otello endgame puzzles uh, playlist for what I've covered so I've already completed 10 Otello endgame puzzles with Otello quest application and right now I'm going to be moving on to actually solving uh, the Otello endgame puzzles on the Otello Japan website uh, created by Mr. Nakajima himself, which is a lot more complex because usually you find puzzles with maybe 9 to 10 empties over there. And of course, uh, for myself, I think many a times I've run into very complex puzzles and, and find it difficult to solve, even as a world uh, maybe top 100 player. So yeah, let's jump over to his website right now. So right now, we've toggled over to Othello Japan website. The link is basically www.othello.org. So that's a very interesting website that he's created over here. You have quite a number of um, uh, basically resources in Japanese over here for uh, studying Othello and improving your game. Uh, there are also tournament uh, information. And basically, this is kind of like the calendar that he has in terms of um, you know, workshops there are and, you know, tournaments, team tournaments that you can participate in in Japan, interestingly. And of course, some of the top news uh, headlines is at the top, tournaments, classroom, uh, playing on the net, uh, basically, uh, I think a gaming platform that he's created. Um, some ot online Othello lesson, he runs an online Othello school. Uh, yeah, some video links that he's added to his website as well. So if you do scroll down, uh, most of the time the players, or at least some of the top players, do like to enjoy his uh, puzzle. So this is actually refreshed on a daily basis. Uh, I believe it's almost in the morning uh, at 8 a.m. Japan time. Uh, that this is being refreshed. So this is his uh, daily Otello puzzle. Some of the other news, uh, basically him teaching uh, Otello at a classroom back then. Uh, and of course, his YouTube uh, link. So let's jump into essentially the end game puzzle. So this is actually his website. So let's jump right in. So if you want to challenge the puzzle, you can jump in. And yeah, let's... Uh, I think this is an advertisement, so okay. Uh, yeah, basically this is the daily puzzle, which over here, uh, if it's in this character, so this is Hei in Chinese, which basically means uh, Shiro in Japanese and basically means black in English. So it's if it says Shiroban, it means that it's black's turn to play and you are supposed to try to win win from here. So over here is koko kara uh, katte usai, I think. So basically it means that you should play for, as black and try to win from this point. And of course the computer will be playing white and providing the automatic response. And over here they also have the count which up till now 709 people have challenged this puzzle. 553 of them have eventually solved it and out of this uh, basically 203 people solved it on their first attempt so I think he basically uh, clocks or uh, registers your IP address if you read if you solve it on the first attempt um, this count would increase and this count would also increase but if you didn't solve it on your first attempt then you would only just add on to this number so pretty much when you visit the puzzle and if you see a bunch of numbers you can roughly know how difficult uh, the puzzle is so that's a very interesting one to include that count so over here um, let's try to solve it perhaps you know since we're already here so uh, I think it's black's turn to play uh, we want to consider some of the count we have 19 discs as black uh, parity region to the left right to the top all of them are to white's advantage. So typically, if you want to win, uh, I believe there might be something special that is required, maybe a swindle. So one of the swindle that I could almost immediately look at is to play b8 first, feed off the corner, 
and then go for g7 and control this side diagonal momentarily so that I can take g7 and h7 simultaneously. I think that's a basic idea to start with. Uh, if I were to play this move and if white were to play to the top at b2, perhaps I'll just feed over here and I'll be able to force uh, white to take this and I can wedge in between. I'll grab the corner. Finally, I sweep down with g7. Hopefully, I can still win the game. So I, I believe just looking at this puzzle, uh, it wouldn't make sense to start with the top because it just gives up the corner. And if I start off to the top, I mean bottom right, I would just essentially be giving away parity. So I'm quite uh, convinced that maybe b8 is where we start with. So the computer responds with b2, which is something that I didn't really expect, perhaps. Uh, yeah, but yeah, I mean, if we were to play that out, let's see. If we have 18 white this, I play this, I take 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. He has to respond to the corner. I lose 6 this, that leaves me with 17. I play a7, add 2 to that, 19. 19 plus 1, plus 5, 25, 25, finally, uh, let's see, black, white, black, 25, if I sweep back down, I pick up 5 along this side, 30, 34, 39 discs, and finally, I lose 4 discs, so I think that's a win for us, let's go ahead with that sequence, so I'll play this, uh, strange, it's not allowing me to play it at this point in time, but yeah, let's, uh, that, yeah, I, I think it probably didn't regist quite register my mouse earlier, so I'll play this, followed by the initial plan sequence, and followed by the down sweep over here, and yes, we won, 37 to 27. So, yeah, if we refresh the page, we should see this number jump up. I think this jump number may not jump up <laughs> due to some uh, bug earlier that you know resulted in that. But basically, this is his daily refresh puzzle. You can come on a daily basis, try new puzzles every time, uh, you might run into something very challenging when you see a very small number here and here. So yeah, basically that is Otello Japan for you, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you very much for joining me.